In this question, we need to find the length of this given vector function, r of t. And we're going to do that between t values of 0 and 1. Now, there are a couple of different versions of the arc length equation for a vector function. The form that we're going to be utilizing is this form right here. And if we look carefully at it, we can see that we're going to need to compute the derivative r prime of t of our vector function. We may wish to do that as step one of this problem. So here is our vector equation, and we're going to take its derivative. And when you take the derivative of a vector equation, you simply need to compute the derivative of the x, y, and z components of that vector equation or vector function. So for example, the derivative of 6t, of course, is just 6. We have t squared. We'll use a basic power rule there. So the derivative of t squared is 2t. And then here, again, power rule, we're going to multiply 3 by 1 ninth, which is 3 ninths. That reduces to 1 third, and then we have t to the power of 2. So there is the derivative of our vector function. And if we look back at the equation for the arc length, after computing the derivative, what we next need to do is figure out the magnitude. And the symbols they use for the magnitude are these vertical lines. And as a reminder, to find the magnitude of a vector, we basically apply kind of a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem in essence. What we're going to do is take the square root of the sum of the squares of each component. So in this case, the magnitude of our r prime of t is going to equal a big square root, and then we're going to square each component. So we would have 6 squared plus 2t squared plus 1 third t squared squared. And of course, we want to simplify this. We square 6 to get 36. 2t squared is 4t squared. Notice you have to square the coefficient of 2 and the t. And then we square the 1 third t squared to get 1 ninth t to the fourth. We may actually wish to rewrite this in a standard form. So we'll write it in descending powers of t. So in other words, we'll put the 1 ninth t to the fourth first, followed by the 4t squared, and then followed by the constant of 36. So this is the magnitude of the derivative of our vector function. If we sneak a peek back at our arc length equation, we now have to set up an integral from a to b. And please note that the a and the b are simply the lower and upper bounds of t, respectively. So we're integrating from 0 to 1 in this case of the magnitude of r prime of t. So here would be the setup for the arc length. We would say L is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of this magnitude right here of the r prime of t. And then we're integrating with respect to t, so we put dt here. Now this integral at first looks somewhat challenging, but there is a miraculous trick to it. It turns out that it will factor relatively easily. And perhaps the best thing to do here first is to factor out the 1 ninth, but keep that underneath the radical for a moment. So for example, we're going to have 1 ninth factored out. So here we would have t to the fourth. And then for the next term, basically you're going to want to take 4 and divide it by that 1 ninth. Alternatively, you can take the 4 and multiply by the reciprocal of 1 ninth, which is 9. So 4 times 9 is 36. This gives us t squared. And then over here, we have the same idea. You can divide 36 by the 1 ninth, or you can multiply the 36 by 9 over 1. And if you do that, you would get 324. Now, the expression still looks a little bit intimidating, but as noted, it will factor and it factors even further than just that 1 ninth that we took out. Turns out that we can factor this in the following manner. We have t to the fourth, so the most likely factoring would be to split that into t squared and t squared. And then what's interesting here is that 324 happens to be a perfect square. You may notice that 18 squared is 324. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to put in 18 and 18 here. Now, again, the reason that works is because 18 times 18 is 324, but it also works in relation to the middle term. So for example, just to double check this, if you were to multiply this out, you'd have t squared times t squared, which is indeed t to the fourth. 
and then you'd have t squared times 18, you'd have another t squared times 18. So you'd actually have a pair of 18 t squareds, and if you combine those, you would indeed get 36 t squared, and then you would multiply the 18 by 18, and as noted, that's 324. So lo and behold, it does factor in that manner. And in fact, we can compact this into the following format. So we have the square root of 1 ninth, and since we have a pair of identical t squared plus 18s, we can actually write that as t squared plus 18 squared, like so. And now the miracle, because both 1 ninth and the t squared plus 18 squared are perfect squares. So it's kind of this idea when you take the square root of a perfect square, then the square root and the square cancel effectively to just leave you with x in that little example there. So in this case, we're going to take the square root and we're also going to square root the 1 9th. So that becomes 1 3rd. And then as noted, the square root and the square cancel, and this gives you t squared plus 18. This is looking much easier, as I'm sure you'll notice. Why don't we factor out the 1 3rd? And now we are left with a relatively, in fact, very easy integral here. So we'll go ahead and integrate using some basic power rules once again. So t squared, you just add one to the exponent, that becomes t cubed, and then you divide by that new exponent. And then the integral of 18 with respect to t is just 18t. We're integrating from zero to one. We'll set up a pair of bracketed expressions. So we're gonna have one third, the first bracket, we're gonna plug the one in. Recall you put the upper limit in first, of course. So one cubed over three, plus 18 times one. That is your first bracketed quantity. The next one, well, you're plugging in zero. So if you cube zero and then divide by three, you end up with zero. And of course, if you multiply 18 by zero, you still have zero. So that's always nice because this last term here just cancels out. The rest is just simple arithmetic. So could use a calculator perhaps. One third plus 18 is 55 thirds. So you have one third times 55 thirds. And then when you multiply those, you just multiply the numerators and the denominators and you get the arc length is equal to 55 ninths. So that indeed would be the correct answer.